Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about potential energy, kinetic energy, and how um, mass and height can create creators. So, first we're going to do a review. Kinetic energy is what? That's right. Energy in motion. So we're going to talk about the motion of energy. And potential energy is what? That's right, stored energy. We've talked about examples of each of these. What's one of potential energy that comes natural to Earth and all objects on Earth? Oops, that's right, gravitational. And when we talk about gravitational energy, we have abbreviated it as Grav-E. So, we're going to be using these ideas, and we're going to be talking about how we can move between kinetic and potential energy. So, in this diagram, I'm holding a marble, and when I'm just holding it here, above the ground, do I have potential energy or kinetic energy? That's right, here I have a lot of potential energy. When I drop it and it's going down, it's hitting the ground, the moment it hits the ground, do I have a lot of kinetic energy or do I have a lot of potential energy? That's right, here it's mostly kinetic energy. And as, I'm, as the ball is falling, what kind of energy do we have? We have both kinetic energy and potential energy. If it's about halfway, it'll be about half and half, potential and kinetic energy. What questions do you have so far? Great. Sonia's going to come up and she's going to talk to you. No, I lied. Robert's going to come up and talk to you about the lab we're going to be doing and craters. All right, we want to do a little lab today to think about how that energy is changing, how much energy we're getting, by thinking about craters that are formed when meteorites hit the ground. So for your experiment, you want to get a little bucket, fill it up with some sand. The finer sand works better than gravel, by the way. <laughs> and you're going to have a couple different ball bearings, a nice big heavy ball bearing, a little ball bearing. Now we're going to kind of find out how the craters change based on the height and the size of the ball bearing. Now, we know that it's going to take energy to move the sand that's in the bucket. So the bigger crater we get, we must have had more potential energy to begin with. And that potential energy transferred into kinetic energy. That kinetic energy was used to move the sand. So get your bucket filled about halfway up with sand. We're going to take the two different marbles. The first thing you'll do is from small height with the small marble. Pick a height like about 10 centimeters. Drop the small marble in. Now take a look at how big that crater is. Measure it and kind of see what you got. Write down, the, write down how big that is. Now take it, drop it from three times as high. Drop that in. Take a look at the crater that you formed there. Now, you already knew what was going to happen. The crater was bigger when you dropped it from a higher position than when you dropped it from the lower position. So there must have been more potential energy because that all turned into kinetic, which moved the sand. Take this bigger ball now, drop it from the small height into the sand. How does that crater compare to the other craters that you formed? It should be bigger than the one that was dropped or formed by the small marble from the same height. And we can kind of see how it compares to the one when I dropped it from the bigger height. Now lastly, you want to take that big marble and drop it from the greater height. And we already know what's going to happen here. We're going to get the biggest crater yet. So we drop that in, we can measure that crater, find out there. Take a look at that, try it from some various heights with the different size marbles. If you've got a third marble, try that too. And each time be thinking about how much potential energy you must have started with to create the crater that was formed. And the last thing we want to do is use our formulas, which are going to be put up here soon to calculate exactly how much potential energy we did start with and find out that relationship between the mass and the height that we started from.
And Sonia's going to come up to show us that. We did centimeters, didn't we? Not meters. That's what we measured. Yeah, centimeters. Okay. Let's work some math and see the connection between math and science and how you're actually going to go through and calculate your gravitational potential energy. No, gravitational energy. So we have this fantastic equation that you guys have seen before and we've worked it through a couple times. All right, so we ought to figure out what all these letters are and what they mean in relationship to the problem that we're working. So right here we have the EPH is equal to your gravitational, I'm going to abbreviate, energy. Our M isn't hard to figure out, that's our mass of the object of the ball that you're going to have. Okay, um, what else do we have? G is gravity, and then H is your height. Alright, and then also for our purposes, we have to figure out what units we're going to be using with each of these. Mass, we're going to be using kilograms. Gravity is a known number that we always get to use. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. Correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you for being with me. Um, and for our purposes today, we are going to round this up to 10. It's okay. It's a nice number that we can go through and use, and it makes our calculations a lot easier. Height is in meters. Any questions on any of these terms so far? Do they all look correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's say that I have a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Gravity isn't going to change. We're not going to go on a different planet. So we are going to be using 10. And our height right here is going to be 0 0.5 meters. All right. And what I want to figure out is how much gravitational energy do we have? When you have a lot of letters next to each other, what does it tell you mathematically to do? Multiply. You multiply. So this is just going to be a big multiplication problem. M, we're going to put in, is our 1,000. So we're going to have E, pH, is equal to 1,000 times gravity times our height. When we go through, put it into your calculator, how much energy do you have? That's right, 500. And what is energy measured in? 1,000. <laughs> Joules. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Forgot the extra 10. All right, let's do another one and see if I can get it correct. Let's change these. Which number doesn't change? Gravity. That's right, the gravity. So I didn't need to erase that. All right, let's do a mass of, let's keep it the same, 1,000. Gravity stays the same, and let's say I have a height of 0 0.5. What increased? No, that's what I did before, right? That's what I thought. Okay. I'm going to decrease my height and say 0 0.5. Did I increase, decrease? Decrease. So what do you think is going to happen to the gravitational energy? Let's find out. So I'm going to have my EMPH is equal to mass is 1,000. Gravity stays the same, 10, but my height now is 0 0.05, which is initially what I thought I was my other problem. All right, when you crunch all that out, what do you get? 500 <laughs> joules. So our height decreased, the energy also decreased. All right, last problem that we're going to do, and then you guys are going to sit and work these out on your own. And again, notice, which one didn't change? Gravity. It's always going to be the same. I'm going to decrease my mass by half. And let's say we're going to get crazy here, and our height now is going to be 20 meters. Let's see what happens to our energy. Is it increasing, decreasing? What actually happens when you 
crunch the numbers. Going back to our fun, fabulous equation that we really like because it's just a bunch of multiplication for these examples. 500, gravity stays the same at 10, and now my height is 20. Go through, crunch the number, and my potential energy now is 98,000 joules. We decrease the mass, but we increase the height. It's still going to change the gravitational force. What? Yeah. Would it be 100,000? No. That's, if the acceleration of gravity is 9 for me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 100,000? Yes. There you go. I should have kept it at 9.8. It's all right. That's how you work the formula. <laughs>